Hey everyone, Kim with Kim Hauls here. I actually am going to have two hauls today for you. Um, the first one is a book haul from Dollar Tree. And the second one is a dollar, just other things from Dollar Tree. And then a few things from Walmart. So to start off with the, the books from Dollar Tree. And it's quite a few books. Um, I got Prophets Prey by Sam Brower. Prefaced by John Krakowow. My seven year investigation into Warren Jeffs and the Fundamentalist Church of Latter day Saints. Uh, trying to get there where y'all can see my little light box. My husband got me for my birthday that I showed in that one haul. And if you saw the movie, uh, I can't remember, it was on like a year, two years ago. But Warren Jeffs on Lifetime, he was the guy that wrote this, I think it, he has something to do with that movie. But it, anyways, it was originally $27, as you can see. And it looks really good, so I can't wait to read this. And then I also got, which I want to say, Lala from Lilybug Lane got this. It might have been somebody else, but I want to say it was her. It was Judy Devereaux's For All Time, New York best-selling author of True Love, a Nantucket Bridles novel. And this also originally sold for $27. And it says, New York best-selling author Judy Devereaux returns to the magnificent sunny island in for all time, the second novel in the Nantucket Brides trilogy, this time featuring the next generation of her beloved family of Monta Montgomery Tiger Taggarts, I think that's it. The wedding of Alex Madison and Jared Montego is a glorious affair in an elegant little chapel in the woods, followed by a dinner and dancing, all while moonlight blankets the festivities in a romantic glow, while most Guests are fixed on the happy couple. Jared's cousin, Graydon, can't look away from the bridesmaid, Toby Wyndham. Wyndham. It's not just her quiet beauty that entrails him, entrails, entrails him, or the way she makes him laugh. Toby possesses the truly remarkable ability of being too distinguished. That's just a little bit from it, but it looks really good, and that's the chick that wrote it. And then on this one, I don't think it has a picture of anyone on here. Oh, it did, sorry. And this is the guy that wrote Prophet's Prey. And then I'm usually one that buys the, you know, biographies and stuff like that. I always get fiction, nonfiction mixed up. But I think it was K is for Karen. And I don't think she follows my channel, but hey, if <laughs> she does, if she watches my videos or not. But I want to say she showed this book, Burial Rights, and she said it sounded really interesting, and I agreed. And I was like, oh my god, it sounds really good. And it says, it's a Burial Rights by Hannah and Kent, an original new voice with a deep and lovely, lovely grasp. On, of language and story. Geraldine Brooks, winner of the Pulitzer Prize. It is, was originally $26. Sorry, I have my light right here. Let me try to see if I can move my light a little closer so you can see a little better. There you go. I'm just a little expert from it. Ex expert. They said I must die. They said I that I stole the breath from men, and they must. And now. They must steal mine. Charged with the brutal murder of two men, Agnes, I cannot even try to pronounce her last name, has been removed from her homeland, farthest reaches, to the isolated farm to in Northern Iceland, to await execution. Horrified at the prospect of housing a convicted murderer, the family on the farm avoided Agnes. Her arrival threatens the peaceful rhythm of their way of life. 
While her static approach to the daily chores is unsettling in contrast to the passion that rumor has it drove her to kill, disturbing proof for, for them of the dangers that can lurk beneath a placid surf, surface, a solid surface, sorry. Only Toto, a priest, Agnes has mysteriously chosen to be her spiritual guardian, seeks to understand her. As the winter months pass and Agnes' death looms closer, the farmer's wife and daughters learn there is another side to this sensational tale they've heard, but will their new knowledge be enough to save her? And that's just a little excerpt of it. And this looks really good. And I don't think... And then this is the picture of Hannah that wrote the book. And then... I'll show this one real quick. I showed this in a previous haul, but I got two more, which is the Rose Kennedy Family Album. And I just love these book, books. I love history books. I've always loved them. And I... Anytime I see a history book, I will get one. I'm trying to find case Karen had a Civil War book, book she showed. And I'm trying to find that one. And then I think it was case Karen also showed a Hillary Clinton book. And if I'm right, she said that it's, you know, she's not saying she supports her or doesn't support her. She just wants to read about her. And I'm the same way. I'm not saying I support her or don't support her. I just like to read about the person. I don't think that somebody should, you know, be talked about badly because they support the person or don't support the person or because they buy the book because they want to read about them. You know, some of us just want to read books because we want to read stuff about people. Anyways, uh, back on the subject of the book. I don't know who this guy is. Sorry. Allergies in my nose is making me real too bad. It is the uncommon youth the Guild with Life and Tragic Times of J. Paul Getty III by Charles Fox. This is the front of the book. And it said it all began, sorry. It all began for me on San Francisco's Telegraph Hill the morning of February, of February, sorry, Friday, July 13th, 1973. I walked down Green Street to Chinese Grocery at the corner and bought things for breakfast and a copy of the San Francisco Chronicle. Its front page headlines brought the news headlines brought the news that Nixon had been hospitalized with viral pneumonia, Perón was being reelected in Argentina, and right below that young Getty vanishes, kidnapped call. When I telephoned my editor in New York to tell him the assignment was in the mail, he said, You're in Europe. I want you to go down to Rome and find out what happened to this Getty boy. He has been kidnapped, or is he staging a hoax? That's the super rich. I don't know any of those people. You'd be surprised, he said. And then on the inside, it just says, that, just tell you a little bit about him. That Jerry Paul Getty, little Paul Getty the third, the grandson of Eddie of Getty, oil founder J. Paul Getty, may have been cursed by money and privilege from the moment he was born, falling into uh, falling in with the wrong people and practically abandoned by his famous family. And this originally sold for twenty five ninety nine. And I think I said that. Burial rights sold for, yeah, $26 originally. And, sorry, my foot fell asleep. This does not have a picture of the guy that wrote it. Or I would show it to you, but it is wrote by Charles, Charles Fox. But like I said, that is the picture. Ow. Then... The book I've been looking for is the Snooky book. I know some people might laugh, but I did like watching Jersey Shore when I was younger, and I liked watching Snooky and Jay Wow show that they had. And but I haven't been able to find it. But I did watch The Hills and Laguna Beach growing up. But I found I bought one of Lauren Conrad's books, 
But I found Bo Bosworth, The Lowdown. And I figured, why not give it a read and see, you know, what it's about. It just says, Bo Bosworth, The Lowdown. Life and love in Hollywood, in the Hollywood Hills. Sorry, allergies. Take it from me, low insight into relationships feels like advice from a girlfriend. Lauren Conrad's best-selling author of L.A. Candy. And it just says on the back, after starring on two hit reality shows, Lil Bosworth knows a how to deal with relationships ups and downs. Now you can get Lowe's advice on the best way to handle dating disasters through her own experiences and those of her recognizable friends. Lowe shares real life stories and hard won, hard won wisdom to help you ditch those losers and land the guy you want. And that is her right there. And this book was originally $9.99. And then this book is The Witness War Red, the 19th wife who brought polygamous cult leader to justice, Rebecca Musser. And let me pause this real quick. All right, I'm back. Sorry. Okay. So, uh, excuse me. I have this on Audible too. And I may have showed this in a previous haul. But I couldn't find it, so I bought it again. Anyways, I wanted to have a, the actual copy of it. And I really think it's a good story. And I feel like this girl was very brave for what she did. And what some people may not know, I was realized, is Rebecca here. You know, she tells her story about what happened. She was married to Warren's dad. Rulon Jeffs, and then Warren tried to force her to marry him, and she didn't want to, so she ran away. And, you know, that's kind of how he, she helped came victim. Well, this is Rebecca's sister. Her name is Elisa Wall. She wrote this book, Stolen Innocent. I didn't get this at, uh, Dollar Tree, I actually, my library was selling books, and I bought this at a library when I lived in Missouri. And so if you read this book, The Witness War Red, definitely try to find Stolen Innocence. Because these are good, it's a, definitely good to read them together. Because this poor girl went through so much too with, with what happened with Warren first her to marry her cousin. And it was in the movie that happened, you know, and so, and the movie was also with, had her in it too, the whole thing that had to do with the Prophet's Prey book. But yeah, definitely, if you can, try to find this, because it is a very good book. Sorry, I just forgot to let you guys know. Anyways, but yes, this book was originally $26, but I can't remember if these two are straight like sister sisters from like same mom and I know they had the same dad but I can't remember if it's the same mom or half sisters I'd have to double check because I can't remember but once again both very good books both sad books at the same time because of what they went through but both very good books okay next I got the Deep Thoughts from a Hollywood Blonde, a memoir by Jenny Garth. I love this girl. She's hilarious. I love watching her on 90210. Oh, God. I can't even remember everything she's been in. Everything she's ever been in, I've watched. And I think it's like, what do you like about me? She was on and stuff. And she just cracked me up. This was originally twenty six ninety five, And, like, it has pictures. You know, of her growing up. And like, of her with 90210. And with her, you know, her first husband. Uh, Peter, I can't even pronounce his last name right. 
I had babies and then when she was on Dancing with the Stars and then and I want to say it was when What Do You Like About Me she has pictures on here too of but I'm not quite sure but I haven't read it yet but definitely if you can find it I think it is probably going to be a very good read because she is fun, very funny and then once again like I said I love to read books about people and I don't remember which Dollar Tree I was at or where I was at but Catherine the Great if you know anything about Russian history she was actually not born Russian she married oh my god I want to say she married Peter the Great uh, hold on let me see it says she, yeah she was born into a minor nobility noble family Catherine transformed herself to into Empress of Russia by sheer determination possessing brilliant minds and instability curiosity a young woman she deserved dev, devoured the works of intelligent <laughs> philosophy and when she reached the throne attempted to use her principles to guide her rule of the vast backward Russian Empire she knew or corresponded with the permanent history she's a poor girl I've actually watched documentaries on this poor girl like when she had her first child her I think it's it wasn't her mother-in-law it was like her aunt-in-law who was empress at the time took her baby and was raising him and then she had another one and she took that one too so I find it very interesting I want to say she was born German if I remember but it's very very good so definitely if you can read it it was originally $35 I read through it once I loved it it's wrote, written by Robert K. Massey this is the gentleman that wrote it it's a pool Pulitzer Prize winning author. He's a Pulitzer. Sorry. He is a Pulitzer Prize winning author. He also wrote of uh, Peter the Great and Nicholas and Alexandria. Okay. Then I got The Queen's Lover. Now, I don't remember if anybody remembers hearing a little while back about. Uh, sorry, my nose is really itching. The whole story about Marie Antoinette having an affair with Count Furson. I mean, in the movie, it was where Antoinette with uh, Kirsten Dunst. They have that little hint tour of it. But this book is supposed to be more of it. How he was going to come back for her and she told him not to. And that basically, something about he, it go pretty much in the back of here it says, Paris, 1744. Count Axel Van Vaughn, sorry, Von Fersen, is at a masquerade ball when he meets the young and mesmerizingly beautiful Marie Antoinette. Their electric encounter launches a love affair that will span the course of the French Revolution. At Versailles, Fersen becomes a devoted companion of the to the entire royal family. And learns the deepest secrets of the court until he tears himself away from his beloved to join the fight for an American independence. When he returns from to returns, when he returns, France is on the brink of disintegration. After a failed attempt to free the royal family before they face the guillotine, he goes home to Sweden, where he soon meets his own tragic end. And basically. He was trying to get her to go home with him and she wouldn't leave her kids. It's really sweet, but it makes you wonder what was really true and what wasn't true. 
I've never read it yet, but it sounds interesting. And it was originally $16, and my finger was covering it. And I got it for a dollar. I got Chelsea Handler Uganda Be Kidding Me. Never read any of her books. I used to watch her show on E. I figured why not try one of them. This one just says, wherever Chelsea travels, one thing is certain. She always ends up in the land of the ridiculous. Now in this uproarious collection, she sneaks her sharp wit through for airport security and delivers her most absurd, absurd and hilarious stories ever. On a safari in Africa, it's, it's anyone's guess as to what more dangerous the wildlife or Chelsea. So it sounds interesting. It's got some pictures and stuff in here. So I figured I'd give it a try. It was originally, sorry. I don't know if you can see that, $27. I told you there's a lot of books. And I still have a whole other stack over here. Then this one is The Few Precious Days, The Final Year of Jack with Jackie. Like I said, I just love history. And this one, I can't tell you how much originally it was because it's covered up in the back. And it just, it basically talks about the last year that Jack and Jack get together. And it has pictures of them throughout it. And I think it just, I think they're a very interesting couple. And I would love to find more books about them. Uh, Corey Feldman's choreography I saw this I've actually watched the TV show he had and so I figured this would be interesting I saw some of this stuff growing up I was born in 85 so some of the stuff I'm a little too young for but I figured it would be interesting it just says a deeply personal and revealing Hollywood survival story that's what it's about was originally $24.99. I'm just gonna I think tell you because they're not on a show. I got plus we're at 22 minutes already and I still have to do another video of this one. I hope I have room on my phone. Chase Your Shadow, The Trials of Oscar Vitorius. I found that whole trial interesting, so I wanna read this. I'm hoping that maybe they have a book on her on Reva Steam Camp because I think it would be very interesting and it just I guess it's just talks about the trials because it says Oscar Victorious was it just talks about the trial from what I'm gathering and what led up to it and this was originally $27.99 Cause it just goes, he, you know, due to illness, he lost his legs. Became the first amputee to run in history of the Olympics. He was held a hero. Everything changed on Valentine's 2013. Not since OJ has a courtroom drama riveted global attention. Chase Chad was far more than just a sensational crime story. Shows them a meticulous reporting and extensive access to Torius and his family and friends. Courtroom confrontation between white privileged 27 year old male athlete on trial for murder and the black female judge who alone would decide his fate held in a democratic country trying to exercise its history of racial hatred and academic violence against women exposed the complex social and political realities of post. I'm probably not going to apprehend it. South Africa. I probably just said that word wrong. And then I got Laura Slater, author of Welcome to My Country. Her book, Plain House, Notes of a Reluctant Mother. I figure this sounds good. As I've said before, I do not have any children yet. But I figure this would be a very interesting read. And this is the book.
it is normally twenty four ninety five, and as you know, dollar. It just says Lauren Slater's rocky childhood left her cold to the idea of ever creating a family of her own, but one husband, two dogs, two children, and three houses later, she came around to the challenges, trials, and unexpected rewards of playing house. In this autobiographical piece, Slater presents snapshots of domestic life, populating them with the gritty details and jarring realities of sharing home, life, and body, and the curious institution called family. And then it goes on. We're getting towards the end. We have a few more books to the piece de de resistance. And one book you guys might find controversial, but I bought it for a friend that actually still likes this family. Not for me. And okay, so Cameron bought this one. And I also wanted to read it because it sounds interesting. It's Murder at Camp Delta. A Staff Sergeant's Pursuit of the Truth about Guantanamo Bay. This is the book. It is by Joseph Hickman. It is normally $28. It says the story behind Guantanamo Bay's detainees murdered a secret CIA facility for torture and the U.S. government cover-up. Told by Staff Sergeant who felt honor-bound to uncover it. it. says during his year-long tour of duty, so sorry, I'm sorry, Sergeant Joseph Hickman saw Guantanamo from the inside, the chaotic prisons, the detainee, sorry guys, stumbled onto a mystery, a secret facility he and his fellow soldiers labeled Camp No. When on June 9, 2016, three prisoners died while Hickman was on duty, all supposed suicide, he knew something was seriously wrong. And it just goes on. I don't know if it's true or not. I just figured it, I would read to see if it was interesting or not. You know, just something to read. Then this, I don't know if it's supposed to be a fiction, true, or just a novel. But it says, Tower of Stone, The Battle of the the Battle of Wills in Chechnya. Don't ask me how to pronounce that last name. Because I will never be able to pronounce that. It says... And evict and necessary portrait of people and place in two wars, Tower of Stone, the Battle of Wills in Chechnya, ask what it means to fight relentlessly today without the slightest promise of a better tomorrow. For decades, the extraordinary Polish journalist, how do you pronounce that guy's name, has brought us groundbreaking stories from the world's most dangerous places. Here he reveals the tragedy of Chechnya through the honest sketches of those who have survived. So I'm guessing it basically gives you stories about in Chechnya. I don't know how much this one originally was because it's covered up. Sorry about that. Hopefully I don't run out of time anytime soon. This next one is Bizarre and Chilling Story of Robert Durst, A Deadly Secret. And this basically talks about when his wife disappeared, and then uh, in the 2001, then in 2001, it says, when a medical, when medical student, Kathy Durst, vanished in 82, she was married to Robert Durst, son of New York real estate magnate. Kathy's friends had reason to implicate her husband, which was police Kathy lived in terror of Robert. And that she had uncovered incriminating financial evidence about him, but their secrets went even deeper for decades. Her disappearance remains a mystery. Then in 2001, Durst, an heir to an empire value $2 million, was arrested for shoplifting in Pennsylvania. When they discovered they bought him, he was a suspect in the murder of a Texas. Basically, this guy gets away with everything from what anybody can learn nowadays. And this was originally $16, and this was wrote by Matt Birkbeck. Then this one was Days That I'll Remember Spending Time with John Lennon and Yoko Ono by Jonathan Cox. And I, this was originally 
and it says that the story begins in night one day in 1968 when he went to interview them and then went to the evening the correspondent and that he's talking about when he spent time with them is the easiest way I can put it this one is heart of a patriot how I found the courage to survive Vietnam Walter Reed and Carl Rowe Max Cleveland I actually got this for my dad. I figured my dad might like to read this. It's just by the he said by Henry's middle age, Max Cleveland thought he had nothing to live for. Vietnam had left him a Trump eleven he he had lost his seat in the US Senate. He lost his depression, his fiance, lost his grip of and lost and in the grip of depression he had lost his fiance, but instead of giving up, Cleveland discovered he was would survive. Doctors did not give Cleveland much hope when he returned from Vietnam over coming to spare bond soldiers. This goes on about PTSD and stuff. And my dad has PTSD. He's been on tour and stuff. And I think it would really help my dad. So I actually bought that for my dad. And that was... Let's see what it was. That was... I don't know because I can't see it. Sorry. And then, this is not the best one. So one more after this for the best one. This is winner of the Pulitzer Prize, John Mickham, Thomas Jefferson, The Art of Power. And this is a big book, as you can tell. And I figured, why not? It looked like a good book. And I like, like I said, stuff about history and people. And it's interesting. It's got pictures and stuff. I figured why not. And it says that it's nonfiction, normally eleven ninety nine. Now this is a book that I said that might upset people and it is not for me. I came across it and I was on the phone with my friend of mine and she still supports she doesn't support the son of this family, but she still supports the family because she doesn't judge the family. So please actually I don't think I'm gonna show this book because I don't want to offend people. So actually, I'm not going to show this book. Because I don't want to lose viewers over something that has nothing to do with me. So I will actually show you the piece de resistance. Which is this book. I love this book so far. I'm reading it again. It is Elizabeth the Queen. Which basically, if you've seen the Queen or the Crown on Netflix, this is about Goes, basically goes off this. If you can find it at your local Dollar Tree, any store, go buy it. Especially if you can find Dollar Tree for a dollar. 